You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Market Moose? Mike from the Moose and the Loose. For this Business Friday, we are going to talk about pricing. Uh, I wanted to talk about pricing because it's a very touchy topic, uh, taboo, I would say, even more, uh, because from an entrepreneur point of view, it is probably one of the scariest, if it's not the scariest decision you have to make. Uh, you have to make that scary decision thinking that if you price your service or your good too high, nobody will want to pay for it. And then you look like a fool. And and going back, it feels not right, right? So so if you're like thinking about selling something at 100 bucks and then nobody buys it, like going back to 75 or $50, especially if you have a few customers that paid 100 bucks, like everybody's going to look or feel like a fool and it's not great. On the other side, if you you uh, price at you underprice your service and you charge too little, well then you're leaving a lot of money on the table. And and that was mostly my experience so far. Uh, I realized that at the beginning of Dividend Stocks Rock, I didn't charge enough. So I was worried. I wanted to get volume. I wanted to get a lot of members. And and I mean. I kind of I kind of get why I did that and and like price it at the lowest point price point possible. But two things happened after that. Well, the first one is I got a lot of volume, but I was not making that much money. And and on the other side, well, if you price something cheap, a lot of people will not necessarily give it much value. So there's a lot about that perception. So same thing, if you buy a um, $5 watch, you won't mind if you go in the pool with it or go mountain biking with it. And if it gets some scratches, well, who cares? You're going to buy another $5 watch and that's going to be the end of it, right? But if you buy yourself like an Apple watch at a thousand bucks, well, probably that you're going to skip mountain biking with it or you're going to make sure that you have a pretty solid protection, right? So of course, the $5 watch is probably a bit less interesting has like less features less fancy than the apple watch but you get the point that when you pay something with like a very small price you don't give it much attention so from a membership point of view the problem is a lot of members they go in they take a look around and then if they haven't paid much well they're not going to be committed to go back to their website to read the stuff to actually use it and they will forget it about it until they receive a renewal notice the, the following year. And then they're just going to email you back saying, yeah, you know what? Uh, let's give that membership. I don't use it anymore. So it's not really use it, uh, useful for me. So when I think of the members that had the chance to subscribe to DSR Pro, for example, for less than $200, it's just crazy. It kills me because just thinking like the value I'm providing and the small price they pay, I mean, good for them. I'm happy for them. But going backwards, I would have charged more right up front. The second thing I want to talk about is another kind of like dumb decision. And I I think it's a dumb decision, but I'm not even sure it's a dumb decision. See how when it comes to pricing, it is so confusing and so hard to wrap your head around all of this. So the other, uh, I think it's a dumb decision. Anyway, you let me know on, on YouTube, all right? So I have a fixed price. So I grandfather the price my members pay literally forever. So if you pay like 100 bucks, you're going to pay 100 bucks a year forever, even if you stay with us for 15 years. So it's a great marketing tool because now that have increased the price a few times, someone that wants to cancel and they pay like 200 bucks for a year for DSR Pro, for example, well, then they're going to think twice about it because today they will have to pay $399. So they're thinking, well, it's never going to happen again. That deal is like on the table as long as I remember I re remain a member. But on the other side, again, I'm leaving a lot of money on the table because at first I thought, well, I attract a lot of members. They're going to stick around because they, they have an amazing deal and that's great for them. But I did realize that 
all my cost of operations are increasing every single year. So White Charts doesn't care how much I charge my client. They're just saying, hey, you know what? Your subscription to their financial data service has increased by like 10%. And I mean, we like you as a client, but if you're not happy, you can go and that's going to be fine. And then I realized, wow, okay, so my operational expenses increase, but my revenue from those members don't increase. So that's not like the smartest way to build a business. So again, thinking it, it's a little bit of a dumb decision, but I'm very happy for those who got those deals because it was just amazing. And the reason why I wanted to talk about pricing today is I'm about to increase my prices once more. Um, at the end of this year, I've been talking about it uh, a few times during my webinars, but 2024 is the last time you'll be able to get the, the those prices because at the end of 24, actually before we turn 25 in December, we will increase prices. And every single time I do that, I have this oh my God, like what's going to happen? I have like a big, I don't know, uh, uh, a big problem with this. I, I hesitate a lot. You can even probably feel it in the tone of my voice. I'm thinking about it out loud and now I'm like, oh my God, what is going to happen? So I'm going to raise the prices. Of course, a lot of members, uh, new new members will come in right before the price increase, which is great. But what's going to happen for 2025? Uh, will I be able to sell more memberships or people will just say, you know what, you've like, you've pulled it off one last time. That's way too much now. We're not willing to, to invest that much money into your membership. And that is like a question that you keeps, that keeps like flowing into my mind. So the, uh, the, the trick that I was able to, uh, to pull off. So to, to, to convince myself that it's the right thing because we're providing a lot of value and we add more features every single year. We invest massively in the platform. And then I realized, well, I'm offering a lot more value today than I was last year and three years ago and five years ago. So it's just normal that my price increases. And last time I increased my price was in 2021, at the beginning of 2021, actually in May. So it's been like almost three years now that we have the same pricing um, structure. And so the first thing that I told myself is, all the value that I've given is definitely a good reason to increase the price. The second thing is I never or rarely look at my competitors' pricing structure because I don't care about my competitors. We are like plenty of investment services out there, both on Canadian and US side. Um, some of them are like very similar to mine in in sense that they focus on the same investing strategy, which is dividend growth investing. Some others will invest into like other type of strategies. Sometimes will be a mix, but in the end, that what really matters is to find your key client, like your ideal customer. We keep talking about that, but this is where it, it's really important. And once you have found those ideal customers and you are able to deliver them with an amazing service and really help them achieve their goals, achieve their transition, their transformation into a more confident investor, being able to invest, manage their portfolio, fire their financial advisor. Well, you know what? If you're able to do that for a certain type of person, well, then it's worth a lot more than a few hundred bucks a year. A lot more because that advisor was charging like thousands of dollars. So I'm pretty far away from the real value of what I'm providing. And that's another trick that I use is I look at the price I charge and then I'm thinking, well, if I serve the right customer, I'm providing thousands of dollars in value while charging a few hundred bucks. So then there is a great offer at a very low price compared to what people get in terms of value. And I'm able to do that because I have volume. Like with thousands of members, it's a lot easier to reinvest in the business, to hire competent people, um, great talent, and then improve the website and improve the, the service. If you're not able to do that, well then this is how it's going to be very tough to increase your pricing. So uh, to wrap this up, I'm still scared, even though it's not the first time that I increase my prices. But when I look back in the past, I just realized that I should have increased my prices a lot faster and a lot higher <laughs> throughout my, uh, my history. The second thing is, I offer a lot more value for my specific customer than what I charge. So that's great. And I still have that like 
great pricing structure for clients where if you register to DSR, you're going to keep the same price forever. So inflation is locked in. So you don't have to worry about this part of your life. Um, and, and with all of those combined, I think it's just the right decision to increase prices from time to time. And it's, uh, I mean, it's just healthy as well, because if the business makes money, it will be able to continue to thrive. And if it thrives, well, it will provide more value to a lot more investors. All right, Moose, I hope that you have enjoyed this podcast. As usual, uh, we're going to talk again on Monday. We're going to talk about Alimentation Couchetard and their latest earnings on Monday. So don't forget to stay tuned and stay invested. Hey, welcome to Disclaimer. If you're listening to The Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun, you're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor, I am not your broker, so therefore I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to the podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.